na anatenda mambo yote kwa sababu anatupenda na yale pia anasema anasema kiwa ni kweli hakuna ukweli mwingine isipokuwa yale anayoyasema did you come with your bible this morning would you mind if i have a look at your bible good it inwe tu vizuri biblia hiyo and declare this is my bible declare this is my bible the bible is the word of god i believe in it i believe in what it says i am i believe in what it is i can do and this morning willingly i open up my heart i open up my spirit to receive the incorruptible seed of the word of god and i declare after today's word my life my family the work of my hands everything about me will never be the same in jesus name amen and amen and amen you can bless him again for his word this morning in jesus name you know the word of god is our hope and we thank him for the word this morning and uh, i want us to continue looking at the book of nehemiah as we did the other time and there's a lot we can learn from it and today i want us to look at the gates in the book the gates in the book of nehemiah the gates there are quite a number of gates and and i know you'll be blessed after this word your life will never be the same again nothing about you will be the same again in jesus name you know when nehemiah was called and we we talked about that the other time nehemiah alipoitwa na mungu aliweza kuona ushindi mkubwa msaada mkubwa ulinzi mkubwa kuna mambo mengi yalikuja kwake kwa sababu aliitwa na mungu kufanya ile kazi ya kujenga kuta za Yerusalemu tena so that tells me this is what the lord wanted in his city this, that was exactly the work that nehemiah did was exactly what the lord wanted no wonder the lord supported him at that level that is what the lord wanted in his city and what the what nehemiah went to build is what had made the people want to go back to captivity so when those gates are not there wakati walienda kule jerusalem wakakuta hakuna hiyo hizo gates walitamani tu kurudi captivity so those gates are very very key they are very very important because people would rather stay in captivity rather than staying in a city that has no gates you know and when the enemy came to jerusalem those are the gates he intentionally destroyed the enemy came to jerusalem and he was very careful in what he was doing akasema hizi ma gates zao hizi hizi ndizo ntabomoa kabisa nikishabomoa hizi gates the will the city of god will be desolate as long as i've brought these gates down are we together so these gates are very very important so these gates is what god want to rebuild and this is what the enemy would like to destroy are we together up to that point amen you know but it takes an hemia spirit to do this work to rebuild these gates it takes an hemia spirit an hemia spirit is not a very complicated spirit is the spirit that is able to hear the voice of god in a story nehemia alisikia two story flani alisikia when the brethren came back from captivity uh, from jerusalem walikuwa captivity for many years for about 70 years were in captivity so waliporudi jerusalem wakakuta hakuna asali na hakuna maziwa na hakuna the promises of god as they would have expected so they chose is better we go back to captivity now nehemiah was this man of god who is listening to a story or to a message or to a sermon or or an watch news or an askia to kitu flani he is listening to some say the story of a mess somewhere but inside the mess inside the story inside the conversation he was able to capture god's direction so any one of us can be a nehemiah today so nehemiah is so connected to the spirit of god that in in a normal story he can capture the voice of god yani ana ana story ya 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 kwao 
Anaambia, "Hey, Nehemia, kumeharibika. Kuta zote zimebomolewa." You know, and they speak about this negative news. There are no gates in the city. The tombs of our fathers have been have, have been lead, lead dug and you know we are, they have been exposed. The bodies are exposed. You, but in the story, Nehemia ni ule mtu anajua kwamba there is always the voice of God. In whatever story, there is always the direction of God. Even in whatever you're passing through, God is speaking. There's this voice somewhere. In the, in the, you know when uh, there was this guy, Elijah, when he was in the forest, in the, in the desert, wanting to run away from, from life. And the Bible says there was a lot of noise. There was earthquake, kulikuwa na upepo mkubwa, kulikuwa na moto. Lakini, Inside all that, there was a still, small voice. Amen? So even inside the earthquake, there's still the small voice. And Nehemiah was able to get this voice. So it takes a Nehemiah spirit to do the work of God. So Nehemiah's spirit is not somebody who is called to be a builder. He wasn't a builder. He had, he, it was just this man who is able to hear the voice of God in the story. Amen? So I pray that today, you hear the voice of God. You become the Nehemiah and you hear the voice of God. It takes a Nehemiah. You know, the Nehemiah is the guy who is able to hear the voice of God. You know, the, 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 Nehemiah also had brothers. The brothers, they also had the story. Not even they had the story, they saw the story. They went to Jerusalem, Wakaona Kabisa. They are all Jews. They are all Jews. They are all at the same level. But when the brothers saw the story, they saw the mess. They ran away from the mess. Nehemiah, when he did not even need to see, he just had. Instead of running away, you know, Nehemiahs don't run away. The spirit of Nehemiah is not a running away spirit. It's a spirit that takes action to bring a solution. That's the spirit you need to capture today. Ile kwamba sasa wewe ukisikia story. You know, the brethren, they, they, they came to the situation. They came to the city. Walipone imeharibika. The only thing they could have done is tutroke huku nikubaya. Hawa siyo nehemi. Hawa hezi tuzaidia. People who run away from situations are not able to help. But people who confront the situation. When Saul and the armies are running away from the giant, David ran towards the giant. The nehemi spirit. And these people, as unqualified as they were, just because of having that kind of a spirit, they were able to bring a solution. Amen? So are you the brothers or are you Nehemiah? Are you the type who runs away from the, something? You know, they run away from the family. <laughs> they run away from the ministry. They run away from a situation. But the spirit of Nehemiah did not run away and cannot run away. So Nehemiah prayed and strategically went to the city. To the city where people are running away from. Nehemiah li plan. Nehemiah kaoba mungu. Nehemiah katubu. Nehemiah aka, akaanza mpango ya kuenda kule watu wanatoroka. Kwa sabalijua kwamba, mimi kuna kitu nimesikia. Kwamba God still loves the city. God still cares for this city. There's a rebuilding plan for God in the name of Jesus. Amen. So there are ten gates in the book of Nehemiah. And uh, they have a meaning for us today. These, these ten gates should be built, rebuilt, protected, cherished in our lives. These gates. These gates, in you know. And you know when God gives you something, you need to learn to protect it. Even a revelation. The Bible tells us of um, Nani Uyu Jama, Uyu Abraham. When Abraham alito na mungu, the Bible says he, he was told by God when they're making the covenant with God. Akabona God is ready to ataleta. Na lipos the letter kama sacrifice. The Bible tells us kwamba kulikuwa na na wa, wa, ni, ni makunguru amba walikuwa after the sacrifice. After the things that God the things that God had commanded Abraham to give to God. So, kuna wanyama wa, wa, mdege wa angani amba walijitolea na wao. And that's what happens in our lives. It's not that we don't have solutions or answers, but we are not sometimes able to protect. The Bible says, Abraham, I your direction. I protect your direction. I protect. 
paka akalala it was not an easy work from morning see in your bible somewhere in the book of genesis he was able to protect and you know abraham is another one all these great people abraham is even called our father of faith these are the people and but we can really learn a lot from even today that even when you receive a revelation you protect it you protect it even when you receive a gift you protect it god has gifted you in so many ways are you able to protect those gifts mungu amekupatia hata watu kama gift sometimes you don't know how to protect them because they are always birds of the air wanting to take away whatever god has given to us everything god has given us ikona the enemy and a target the same even your wife even your husband even your children but now god would like you to protect are we together so these gates we need to protect them these these were just geographical locations but i know you know by now that the old testament talks about jesus and the new testament so whenever you reading the old testament unava miwani ya yesu that's the only way you can understand it you you put the yani unaeka macho ya the new testament ndio maana una you have to see jesus in every book in the bible if you don't if there is a book that you are reading and you cannot jesus bado hujapata revelation ya ya mzuri ya mungu cuz there is jesus everywhere the message of the bible from genesis to revelation is about christ so you have to see christ everywhere even when you are reading the book of psalms jeremiah nehemiah ezra any book genesis exodus leviticus deuteronomy see jesus then you have the right revelation in jesus name you know and allow me just to mention those gates we just look the first gate the first gate that nehemiah was able to build was the sheep gate the sheep gate yani gate ya kodo gate ya kodo nehemiah 3 uh, 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 the bible says then elish elishib the high priest rose up with his brethren the priests and build the sheep gate and they consecrated it and hung its doors so the 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 first gate that the priests were able to build through the instruction of nehemiah was the sheep gate yondile this is the gate where animals were brought into the city including temple sacrifices so whenever they wanted to bring sacrifices zile kodoza za kutolea mungu dhabihu hapo ndipo walikuwa wanaletea wanaletea hizo hiyo gate hiyo gate the enemy had destroyed the sheep gate you know and there's a gate of sacrifice the, the gate where they were able to bring sacrifices onto god through that gate and that gate can remind us quite a lot and just maybe a, some little application is to understand that number one, we have to allow ourselves to be the sheep to be the sheep of god to be the sheep in the fold of the shepherd jesus is a good shepherd the first thing that we are supposed to remind ourselves every second every minute every hour the first thing that we are supposed to protect is that we are a sheep we are part of his fold sisi ni sisi tuko katika zizi la the shepherd vile david alisema the lord is my shepherd the lord is my shepherd any time you allow that gate to be tampered with by the enemy that you don't understand that you're not the shepherd and you're not even a goat <laughs> there's a quite a difference between goats and sheep eh kodoni yule muaminifu ana tii mchungaji anafuata mchungaji hiyo ni gate ya kwanza abo nafaa kuhakikisha kwamba every time eh it is well protected it is well built that you are always following the shepherd the shepherd is jesus christ he said i am the good shepherd my sheep they hear my voice my sheep they hear my voice and the voice of another they will not follow so so there is a possibility of the sheep hearing many voices and if that gate is not well protected you may be following the voice of another si hata tumeiba huo wimbo kwamba sauti ni nyingi ninazosikia eh sauti ni nyingi zinakuita zinakupatia direction 
Takwambia fuata hii hapana sauti yako, sauti ya majirani, sauti ya marafiki. Lakini kuna sauti ya mchungaji wako. Na hiyo ndiyo sauti unavaa kuilinda. Hiyo ndiyo ile gate kwamba wewe ni kodo wa hilo zizi lake. Kwa hivyo unamfuata. Daudi alitueleza kwamba huyu mchungaji wetu if you are just able to become a faithful follower of Christ. Huyu mchungaji wetu hautapungukiwa na kitu kwake. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Daudi akatueleza as long as you are you are behind him even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death don't fear any evil evil will not happen to you you will receive comfort his rod and his staff will comfort you this such a benefit if you are able to keep that gate intact kwamba wewe haufuatagi masauti mingi mingi wewe unafuata sauti ya mchungaji hata Paul alituambia follow me as i follow who as i follow Christ Paul alikuwa anatuambia the gate the ship gate for me is settled i am following him i am following him he was so confident even to tell the followers follow me because i will always follow Christ so by following me you are following Christ let's rebuild that gate let's make sure that that gate is, is intact kwa sababu umekubali kukaa katika zizi lake. Eh? Huyu mchungaji nakuambia ni wa ajabu. Huyu ukakubali tu wako kuwa kondoo wake. Huyu mchungaji Daudi alisema kwamba pia sio tu kwamba anaandaa meza because he does that every morning. Anasema kwamba anatuandalia meza yetu machoni pa watesi wetu. Lakini mchungaji pia Daudi alimweleza kwamba pia ana take care of the sheep. Sio tu kuwaongoza akiwa tu mbele anasema kwamba hata kichwa changu anakipaka mafuta this shepherd is a wonderful guy anasema kwamba you know huyo mchungaji wa zamani mahali walikuwa analala kwa hiyo zizi so the shepherd number one, would become the door paka jesus alisema hivyo jesus alisema kwamba i am the door kwa hivyo chochote kinakuja kukuta kodo zangu lazima kionane na mimi kwanza If you protect that and you become a sheep in you you keep the, that gate that you're forever a sheep in his fold he becomes the door you are not the door he becomes the door whatever comes your way in a kutana you know mchungaji alikuwa anajenga hilo zizi ra ya round hasa kodoa kwa hapo ndani yeye analala hapo kwa mlango kwamba simba akija na we have even a record of, of even david told us when the lion came when the bear came they could not get the sheep fast they could only get david fast because he was the door so we have a good shepherd and he is the door and he would like you to give him that that privilege of becoming the door he can only become the door if you are the sheep amen anasema and before even wakati anaenda kukutafutia marisho mabichi na maji matulivu ana asubuhi akiamka anapaka kichwa chako mafuta anapaka mafuta mafuta hiyo yao ilikuwa dawa dawa ya ya kuzuia kama anaweza gongwa na mawe tayari yako na dawa tayari kama anaweza umwa na nyoka dawa iko tayari ona huyo mchungaji huyo mchungaji tukae ndani ya zizi lake he is such a wonderful shepherd and as we, we we stay as sheep we also need to understand we are not the only sheep ni zizi liko na kodo wengi kodo wengine ni wachanga kodo wengine ni wazee kodo wengine you know that's why the, the 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 shepherd has the rod and the staff because the sheep are not the same the rod ni ni fimbo ni, ni gani hiyo gongo lako na fimbo gongo gongo dio the rod eh gongo ni ile ni, ni ile ni ile ya kupiga adui hiyo si ya kupiga sheep eh ni ile ni ile ni ile inaitwaje hiyo the club eh? is like a club ile ya kupiga adui lakini pia ako na fimbo fimbo ni ya kuelekeza kodo hasa ukiwa katika hili zizi la huyu mchungaji lazima uelewe kuna kodo wengine pia wanahitaji kuelekezwa kidogo kidogo hata wewe ukiwa mmoja wao so unafaa kuelewa we, we, we are not the same so you have to learn how to stay with the other sheep some sheep have just been born si ndio wamezaliwa tu juzi pengine hawana nguvu kama wewe 
hawana uwezo kama wewe hawana you know wana, any, you just need to understand you, you, with the picture of a sheep that you have kept your sheep get well you understand the shepherd you understand yourself as a sheep and you know we are together with other sheep the sheep gate the sheep gate the sheep gate the second gate that Nehemiah was able to build is the fish gate the fish gate the fish gate Nehemiah 3:3 3, 3. Nehemiah chapter 3 verse number 3 also the sons of Hasenal built the fish gate they laid its beams and hung its doors with its bolts and bars the fish gate this is a gate that the merchants the business people were using to come to when they brought fish from the mediterranean sea they would be in, the, the, the fish market was near this gate this was the gate that was service to the people this is a gate of service to the people this is a gate it was like a feeding gate this is like the gate when when Jesus told the disciples come after me and i will make you fishers of men i will make you helpers of men so this is another gate you need to build that as you have become a follower of Jesus make sure that the gate that you are a service man you are a service man as much as you do your own things you are a service man you have a you have a commission to help other men to serve other men even the great commission you have been called to save other men the savior will not come if you are not going to go wewe ndiye sauti ya huyo mchungaji. Mchungaji alisema mimi nimekuja kutafuta wale waliopotea. Sasa anataka kukutumia wewe. So lazima uweke hiyo gate intact. Kwamba mimi I am a service man. I am a service man when I wake up. I have my own things yes, but I will serve the church. I will serve the community. I will serve in whatever ability that God has given me. I will be a fisherman. You build the fish gate, be a fisher of men. Go out. This gate nakwambia kwa wengi wetu nikiwa moja wao imebomolewa. Imebomolewa. Na kama gate imebomolewa watu wanatamani kukaa Babylon. Kwa sababu wanataka muji ambao gate zote zimesimama. Sijui fish gate yako iko namna gani. How is your fish gate? How is your fishing? Is your fishing still happening? Because sometimes you may be carried away by many things, you know. This life has many things. To an extent we may forget that we are a fisherman. And we also said the enemy's target is to destroy these gates. So when he destroys the gates, he knows that city haita haitafurahisha Mungu na hata haita haitatimiza lengo lake la kusafu watu ndio maana watu waliingia kwa hiyo kwa hiyo city yenye haina hizo gate wakatamani kurudi Babylon hakikisha fish gate kwamba you are a service man wewe ni mfanyikazi wa Yesu wewe ni mfanyikazi wa we build that gate today there's a joy when these gates will stand this gate will stand the third gate that nehemiah was called to build was the old gate nehemiah 36 moleva jehoiada the son of pasia and meshulam the sons of besodia repaired the old gate they laid its beams and hung its doors with its bolts and bars this old gate This old gate that was located at the corner of the city. This old gate is calling us to return to the old ways. This is a call to return to the old ways. You have to return to the ancient, you know that ancient gate. Kuna jia ambazo unaweza kuta zili 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 zilibadilika. 
katika maisha yetu tukatoka katika zile jia za zamani sio jia zile yani no, ancient does not mean old that we have old and new ancient means timeless are we together when we are talking of old we don't mean that we have new old is not in term, it is the the only way the old way is the only way the timeless paths there's a, there's a scripture in the book of jeremiah let me see whether i have it here yes jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 that says the lord stand in the ways and look and ask for the eternal paths good this is good the amplified talks about you know the eternal paths just hold on that that they are called eternal paths eternal sio kama kuna jia zingine mpya hizo jia za zamani they were the eternal can can we look for, go for another fashion please i just want you to hold that word eternal twende twende kwa fashion nyingine eh hey, please okay watu wetu wameenda wapi good that is the lord stand in the ways and see and ask for the eternal paths old paths another translation would say ask for the ancient paths meaning kuna jia za Mungu ambazo hazifai kubadilika katika maisha yako sio kama mambo mapya hakuna mambo mapya atakuja kubadilisha jia hakuna jia mpya jia Mungu ni moja na hakuna eh, good this is what the lord says start at the crossroads and look ask for the ancient paths ask where the good way is so the good way is in the ancient paths and walk in it if you walk in it you will find rest for your souls but you said we will not walk in it that that old way you know there's a lot we can talk about but we know where we find rest for our souls that is the way of christ that is the timeless way that is the ancient way that is the only way even when jesus came and he declared that i am the way i am the way that was i am the way that is i am the way that will be he declared himself the only way from eternity past akasema mimi tu ndio jia hata zamani ni mimi tu ndio nilikuwa jia hata siku za adam i was the way hata siku za elijah i was the way alisema i am the way i am the truth i am the life nobody can come to the father nobody can experience the father nobody can enjoy the father nobody can have the ministry of the father but by me so they had to repair the old way how is your old way how is my old way hiyo jia ya zamani iko namna gani hiyo jia ya wokovu ya ukristo eh misajao hiyo jia yetu iko namna gani are we still in christ can we stand like paul and declare in him we live in him we move in him we have our being you know that's a very strong statement paul declared in acts 17 kwamba in him i live that all my life all that i do i do it inside him all my movements in whom i move in him i move everything i do in him i have my being i'm complete in him so paul alikuwa anasema hiyo jia ya zamani that's where i live that is where i move that is where i have my complete being the old path lakini hao watu wa jeremia nehemia alisema kwamba watu waliona hiyo jia wakasema tutapitia hiyo wanasema hiyo jia is so complicated now hiyo jia hiyo jia hapana unajua kuna mambo imebadilika hii hakuna kitu imebadilika He is the same yesterday today and forever. His ways are the same yesterday, today and forever. Technology does not change the way. Nothing can change him. His way is eternal. Jeremiah 18 uh verse 15 to 17 because my people have forgotten me. They have burnt incense to vanity and they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths to walk in the paths in a way not cast up for that reason they have made their land desolate when the old path is destroyed 
When the old gate is destroyed, your, your gate has a money. You have to enter into through that gate. And that gate, I me kwambia, it is Christ. Jesus is the ancient of days. Return to the old way. The only way. The way is Christ. The way is obedience to God, honor of God, being under the authority of God, and that's how you are able to rebuild the old gate. Are we together, church? The fourth gate that Nehemiah built. The fourth gate. Hope you are writing this thing down. And hope you can be the Nehemiah who hears the voice of God inside a story. Amen? Napigua tu masori ya kini dani yake unapata direction. Direction. God is giving people direction here. Imagine after the wall was rebuilt. After the gates were rebuilt. Nehemiah nasema kwa the joy of the Lord is now my strength. Everything was okay after rebuilding the gates. You can access joy. You can walk in joy. You can rejoice in the Lord always and again and again and again. But the gates have to be intact. The gates have to be rebuilt. And you are the only Nehemiah in your life. Hakuna muingine, ni wewe tu. So hear the voice of God. The fourth gate is the valley gate. The valley gate. Nehemiah 3.13 Hanun and the inhabitants of Zanoa repaired the valley gate. They built it, hung its doors, and with its bolts and bars, and repaired a thousand cubits of the walls as far as the refuse gate. The valley gate is where Nehemiah began his nocturnal investigations to the ruins of the city. Every Christian needs a valley gate, for God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Valley means like going down. Going down. That is a call to embrace humility. To live in humility. If you are going to be a city, a city well built, the valley gate must be intact. You are the city we are talking about, by the way. You are the city. This can also be your family can be the city. Your ministry can be the city. The DOF can be the city. The choir can be the city. The egos can be the city. Deliverance Church can be the city. Every, you know, this one you can play everywhere. You have to have the valley. Valley talks of humility. And that is what God really loves when we are walking in humility. First Peter 5, 6 says, Likewise, you young people, submit yourself to your elders. Yes, be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. So God has in many, many, many scriptures talked to us about humility. The way of humility is the way. The way of humility is the way of Christ. And humility, I hope you are not misunderstanding me. I'm not talking of walking slowly and talking in whispers. That has nothing to do with humility. Humility is a state of heart. I'm talking of somebody who is as bold as a lion but humble. Are we together? We are not defining the word of God using our minds. Eh? Unless mungu amekwambia. Lakini unaweza ona mtu anatembea pole pole hivi. Eh? Unasema eh anakuwa mnyenyekevu. Eh? Hata akiomba anaomba na unyenyekevu. Unyenyekevu sio sauti. Hata sio kutembea. Anaweza tembea hivi na ni mnyenyekevu. Eh? Kunyenyekea si haionekani katika kutembea. Haionekani katika mavazi. Haionekani katika kule mtu anaishi. Haionekani katika financial ability ya mtu. Eh? Unyenyekevu ni kama ile ya Christ. It was something inside of him. You could not even see it. Actually God alitu, Mungu alituambia how, how Jesus was humble in Philippians 2. Kwamba that he had left a very high position and humbled himself means he agreed to serve God. That's now a show of humility in the life of Christ. He agreed to serve God. He, he comfortably chose to serve God. And God has said a lot about humility. Isaiah 50, 57 verse 15, the Bible says, Thus says the high and the lofty one that who lives in eternity, whose name is holy. And he says, I dwell in the high and the holy place 
with him also that is of a contrite and a humble spirit. He tells us, Isaiah 57, 15. Isaiah 5, 7, 15. He tells us that he lives together with the humble. He lives together with the humble. No, I want, I want everybody. Today, I want everybody. I got to some of those scriptures with Zuri Watuangu. Isaiah 57 15. Okay. He, contrite and a humble spirit. He says he stays together with those who are contrite and a humble spirit. Give us the King James one. To revive the spirit of the humble. To revive the spirit of the humble. I know you want reviving. Reviving is like making a life again. Giving life again. Revive. Energizing again. Helping them again. He does that to the humble. He lives in that place together with the contrite and the humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. So there's a lot that we we get from God when we walk in the humble spirit. The humble spirit is not something that we it is the spirit of Christ. It is the Holy Spirit. We are supposed to be naturally as Christian walk in the heart of humility. But that valley gate needs to be intact. You need to enter through the valley gate. Make sure that you have the valley gate intact. Yesu alisimama akajitangaza mbele ya watu alipokuwa anatuambia karakta yake. Kuna mambo tu machache Yesu alikuwa anasema kujihusu. Namba moja alisema he is good. Hiyo haku ha, ha, alitaka tumuelewe kwamba ni mzuri. Lakini pia akasema mambo mengine mawili akijitangaza mwenyewe akasema kwamba mimi ni mpole na mnyenyekevu wa moyo. Sio mambo mengi alisema yake. Lakini mambo yale ya mazuri Yani ya, alijitangaza kwedu ye ni mzuri na ye ni mwenye nyekevu ye ni mwenye nyekevu kwa hivyo hata wakati akona akona nyahunyo na ameingia in Matthew 21 ameingia kwa tempo na ameanza kuirekebisha usisemi akona kiburi yeye ana anafanya kazi ya mungu kwa unye nyekevu eh, that tells you when you are bringing older don't think that that is lack of humility. And sometimes some people may mistake you as a leader when you're bringing back older. So who ni mukali, sio ukali, ni unyenyekevu. Ni kumcha Mungu na kunyenyekea. Dio maana alikuja akaharibu vitu zao zote. Eh? Hata ni mzuri kuliko pengine Mr. Jawa akitaka kulekebisha haangushi vitu. Lakini Yesu alikuja hizo meza zao. <laughs> eh? Mnyenyekevu na mpole na mzuri. Hivyo ndivyo mwenye nyekevu alifanya, alishika hizo meza zao. Akazirusha inji. Alafa katafuta nyahunyo mahali fulani, akaomba watchman. Hmm? Haku wanatebea na nyahunyo, alitafuta kwa watchman. Kaseba ibu nisaidie na hiki dogo. Haka ingia kwa hiyo kwa tempo. Kwa sabu tempo ya mungu mwenye nyekevu, imefanywa, imefanywa nini? Pango la majambazi. So humility is, is a lesson you need to understand. You know, and some, maybe some people you call not humble. They may be the most humble. <laughs> and some people that you call proud, <laughs> you know, you just need to understand scripture as well. The fifth gate, the fifth gate is the dung gate. The dung gate. The dung gate. Yan gate ya kutupa kinyezi inje. The dung gate. The, actually, the very scripture you have read there in Hemia when they were repairing the the, the, the valley gate, they also, also Nehemiah 3 13, Makija, the son of Lekab, leader of the districts of Beth Hakerem, repaired the dung gate. He built it and hung its doors with its bolts and bars. The dung gate. These are very important gates. The dung gate. Because we have dung. And we need to throw dung away. We need to continuously. The way, the way your body works, even your very body, 
your very biological makeup is that you have you you always continually throw away dung, sweat. You know, kuna vitu wazi natoka ndani yako tu zinaenda. Sendio? After 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 consuming what you thought was great, what you thought was wonderful. Can you imagine having dung after eating a cake? You know, you, you, among the things that we consume, there is always dung. So you cannot tell me that your life is so clean, there is no dung. Eh? Unakula vitu mizuri. Eh? Mbua na kazunga mekupereka mahali, umekula tu nyama, iyo nyama ata karibu kule mfupa. Lakini hapo ndani pia, eh? bada ya proteins kutolewa, kuna vitu ambavyo ata utaki kuviona. So lazima wakikisha kama mukristo, uko na hiyo gates ya kutoa garbage amen are we together there has to be some something you know you have to be continually cleaning yourself the bible says anyone who has this hope in him purifies himself purifies himself just as he is pure that purifying himself is not about salvation now it's about now looking at your life continually where something that is not supposed to be there has invaded your life. You are pure. You are born again. We are not talking about when it says that though he who has this hope in him, he already has a hope in him. He's already born again. But he has to continue purify himself. You can be born again on the way to heaven, but then you cannot go to Kazungu's house. Because of a dung in your life. Heaven will end up. But there are some places they will not even invite you. Because kuna, maybe there is a dung in your tongue. See kuna those possibilities. Neza kuta kuna dung in your lifestyle. Neza kuta kuna dung tu mahali. So this is a call for us to check ourselves. To purify ourselves by the word of God. Amen. We use the word of God as a mirror. The Bible says the word of God is our mirror. The way the ladies, I am sure, maybe 100% of the ladies this morning have looked at themselves in a mirror and maybe 20% of the men. Kuna vile waliangalia kio. Kazungu ni kuchomoka tunakuena. Ama ni aji. Eh? Sindio. Lakini na joku na watu. Hata sababu hile imefanya wakuje late. Wengine watu na hatisbadizao nyuma. Mr. Jaudi ya ingie hapa saa moja na mke wake ya ingie saa mbili na nusu eh, ni kwa sababu pengine ya kio. Kwa sababu kio ni kitu cha maana in life. Kwa sababu kio kina kusaidia kusafisha kutoa dang. Sasa Biblia inasema in the book of James kwa ba the word of God is our mirror. We take the word of God every day. We look at the word of God and we see our reflection inside the word of God. Then we are able to identify some dangs in our lives. Ona ai hiyo hiyo hezi kuwa na Yesu unatoa. Yesu hawezi sema hivyo. Yesu hawezi tenda hivyo. You know we need to purify ourselves. Titus chapter 2 verse 11 says that the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. And one of the things that the grace that has appeared to all men, teaches us. That grace teaches us. In verse 12, the grace teaches us to deny ungodliness, worldly lust, that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So, that grace of God is able to help us to identify the dangs in our lives. Amen. How is this done? Verse number 13. When we look for the blessed hope. When we look at that blessed hope. When we look at the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. He is our mirror. We look at him. We look unto him. Then we are able to identify and godliness. When we identify and godliness, we already have an open dung gate. We don't close the dung gate. We don't allow garbage to stay in. We throw the garbage out. Amen. 
Hebrews 12, 12, 12 verse 1 and 2. Where for seeing we also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. There are some things we need to hold and put them aside. They are weights. You know, and the lighter of Hebrew, hata haku tuambia eti tuombe, tujue hiyo weight. Ni kama naturally tunajua hiyo weight. Tunajua ah, hii si, hii si vai kubeba. So kazi yetu ni kutuambia kwamba hiyo about najua, hatu vai kubeba. Let us throw it aside. It is trying to cling into our lives. It is making the race difficult. Because the dung gate is not repaired. The dung gate has not been opened. It's not ready to throw dung out. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does easily beset us. And let us learn with patience the race that is set before us. Kwa kuna dhambi. Wacha ile ya Adam. Iyo yesu wa redilo na yo. Siyo hiyo sasa tunaungea. Tunaungea kuhusu these daily thoughts. Small things that easily beset us. They easily catch us. We know they are not right. But they are always there with us. They easily capture us. They easily tempt us. Then Paul says, this race, if we are going to win the race, we have to throw this outside through the dung gates. Amen? And how do we do that? Looking at our mirror. Looking unto Jesus. The outer and the finisher of our faith. The way, the way Mrs. Jawa likuwa naangalia kiyo, look unto Jesus. You will quickly identify the dung. You just look at Jesus. You mirror your life with Christ. Unakutu, ah, hapo kuna kitu ni niringia bafu na kuna sabuni ilibaki hapa. Eh? Kuna siku ingine juzi, siju kama ni la Sunday. Siju nani tukua tunamekuja na ee. Halafa kanza kuna Alex kuna kitu ya blue hapa. Nikombia ee, ni kuna taweli ni patuwa mpia. Na after, after kujipanguza, I did not look at the mirror. Please, stay close to the mirror. The mirror is Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Looking is continuous. Looking unto Jesus. The outer and the finisher of our faith. We look unto him. When we look unto Jesus, we identify dung easily. Paul anasema, kuna vitu wakati haku wameokoka, zilikuwa za mana sana kwake. Kuna vitu, kuna tabia zake. Eh? Ata kunyonga watu ilikuwa ya mana sana kwa ke. Kuumiza watu. Sindio? Eh, fuata paulo. Kuna vitu za mana sana kwa ke kabla jaokoka. Kama kuumiza mtu. Kufanya mtu alie, ilikuwa ya mana sana kwa ke. Kwanza kuumiza mkristo. Kuangia vibaya ya yesu. Kutesa wa kristo. Iyo ilikuwa ya mana. Na pola natuambia hivi. Eh, first number seven of Philippians three. That but what things that were gained to me, things to me, they were profitable then. But now I'm different. Things that were gained to me, now I count them loss for Christ. Things that before, there were places that before, haunge nitoa ukondani. Eh? Haunge nitoa ukondani hizo zamani. Kuna story haunge nitoa ndani. Kuna tabia fulani ya maongeo haunge nitoa ndani. Kuna mwenendo haunge nitoa ndani. It was gain to me. It was gain to me. Kuna group kabla yani lazima ningekuwa kwa hiyo group. Sasa nikikaa kwa hiyo group sasa dangit yangu haijajengwa. Kuna group zingine ni dang. Throw them out. Paul anaendelea kusema hivi yet doubtless I count all things. By the way you, you cannot just read first 8. So, when you're reading Philippians 3, you're going to just read verse 8. I have to say, I'm going to go to verse 8. Verse 8. How is it? How is it? I'm going to go verse 8. So, I'm going to I count all things but loss. He did not say all things. Family. Life. You have to read verse 7 to understand what things he was talking about. He is talking of the things that were gained to him before he met Christ. Not all things. Tikomba kila kitu kwangu ni bure. Isbakuwa Yesu. I count all things rubbish. Some things are not rubbish. Some things that were given by God and they are not rubbish, obvious. They are very good things that God has given to us. 
and they are not rubbish. You know, the only thing that Paul is talking about are the things in verse 7. And that's why he says, the things that were gained to me, them, were passed in that other life. Those I count them loss. Now, those all things now, I count them loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, whom I have suffered loss of all those things. And I do count them but dung that I may gain Christ. Are we together? We're just talking about the dung gate. Hakikisha dung gate ikowazi. Ikowazi kabisa. The way your biological dung gate is open. Your spiritual dung gate. Your social dung gate. Every angle of your life. Every dung gate ikwe okowazi. Are we together? For the excellence in knowledge of Christ. The sixth gate that Nehemiah was able to build was the fountain gate. The fountain gate. Nehemiah 3.15 Shalun, the son of Ko, Hosea, leader of the district of Mizipa, repaired the fountain gate. He built it, covered it, hung its doors with its bolts and bars, and repaired the wall of the pool of Shelah by the king's garden. The fountain gate. It was just the north of Dan Gate, near the pool. So the fountain gate. This is a, actually the location near the location where Jesus stood and said, if anyone comes to me, let them, if anyone is thirsty, let them come to me and drink. So the fountain, is Jesus is a fountain. You have to allow Jesus to be the fountain. The Holy Spirit of God. This talks about the infilling of the Spirit of God. anatembea akiwa katika roho wa Mungu anakunywa kwenye hicho kisima paka yeye amefanyika kisima alisema kwamba ukikunywa kwa hicho kisima wewe pia it out of your belly you'll, you'll be a fountain out of your belly shall flow rivers not a river many things rivers of living water so you have many kinds of water rivers if you drink from this one fountain the fountain is one. The fountain is just one. The spirit of God. Kwamba where you value the spirit of God. You want to walk in the spirit of God. You are full of the spirit of God. And then out of you now, imagine, you will not have a river. You'll have rivers. Different kinds of rivers will come out of you. If you rebuild the fountain gate. That every second, every minute, every hour, you are the fountain of life. The spirit of God is the fountain of life. <clears throat> the fountain gate. Amen. The fountain gate. Be filled with the spirit. The seventh gate that Nehemiah was able to build was the water gate. The water gate. Nehemiah 326. Moreover, the Nedinim who dwelt in the opel made repairs as far as a place in the front of the water gate towards the east under the projecting tower. So the water gate is the gate that led to the city of David <coughs> through the Kidron Fari. You know, when the fountain gate reminds us of the spirit of God, the water gate reminds us of the word of God. The word of God has been revered in so many scriptures as the water of life. So you have to rebuild that gate. You have to make sure as a, as, a, as, a, as a man of God, as a Nehemiah, who want to see the city life again. I said your life is the city. Your family is the city. Your ministry is the city. You want to see life again. You want to see the joy of the Lord back in the city. You have to make sure the water gate that you depend on the word of God. You depend on the word of God. You walk through the water gate. You, Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, stand to show yourself approved of God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, lightly dividing the word of truth. Eh. 2 Timothy 2, 15. 2 Timothy 2, 15. Stand to show yourself approved unto God. A workman 
that needed not to be ashamed. Lightly dividing the word of truth. Verse 16 is a warning. That those things that are not the word, throw them away. But shun profane and vain bubblings. For those will increase unto more ungodliness. So Paul is advising the son Timothy to rebuild the water gate. Koba ye ni mutu wa wad. Ye ni mutu wa neno. Ye hapatagi neno sande. Aa. Ye ni wa neno. Hawezi kaa bila water gate. Kama vila hawezi kaa bila maji. Hivyo ndivyo alivyo na neno. Kwamba hagoji sande. Diyo nasima kwamba naenda kusikiza neno. So seven days no neno. Neno ni sande. Eh, 20 minutes. Halafu sasa ye anasema me build water gate. Uyo hana water gate. Water gate ni wewe na neno. Amen. Yani umekaa kwa neno la mungu. Ukiwa peke yako. You, these gates you rebuild alone by the way. We said we are Nehemiahs. We rebuild alone. You don't, you don't need your brother to help you rebuild your gates. It's you rebuilding your gates. The gate of the word. You know, and this word is so exalted. The word of God, David said, Psalms 109, 119, verse 105, your word is everything. Lamp unto my feet, light unto my path. This water is very key. Somebody said water is life. So the word is life. The word is life. The word is life. It's a lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. You know Joshua 1, 8, Joshua was given the word so that he can conquer. He was given the word. First Timothy 4, 11, 16. This is what Paul, Paul Kassasa Akokalibu Kwacha Timothy. Alimambia hivi, these things I'm just about to tell you, command them, these things command and teach them. Second Timothy 4, 11. These things, these things, kabe these things, sasa sitiliye manani, command A, first Timothy 4, 11. First Timothy 4, 11. These things command and teach. Let no man despise your youth, but be thou an example of believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. Have we lost the scriptures? Verse 12 and 13. Verse 14 now. Neglect not the gift that is in thee which was given to thee by prophecy with the laying down of hands. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, you shall both save yourself and those who listen to you. So, aliyelekezwa, akwe msomi, akwe mtendaji, waneno, na kamo kutika yo neno, utapata the right doctrine. Do it, you will save yourself and even those who follow you. Amen. The gate number eight, gate number eight is the horse gate. The horse gate, Farasi. Farasi. Nehemiah 3.28 Behold the horse gate, the priest made repairs, each in front of his own house. The horse gate. The horse gate uh, is a gate whereby well, if it's kuizo, akukuwa na, na, na vifaru. Wakati watu wanda vita, hakuwa natumia vifaru. Vifaru yao ilikuwa ni, ni farasi. So, hiyo gate ilikuwa wazi. Ilikuwa tiari. That is the gate, the warfare gate. Kwamba wewe, umejenga hiyo gate we ni mutu wa, wa vita. Sio vita na watu. Paul ametueleza vizuri that our war is not carnal. We do not fight against flesh and blood. But we, we have an intact horse gate. We are fighters. We are naturally fighters. The water gate is built. Kwa we go to war. We are actually, Paul Pia, we are soldiers. Aliambia Timothy, no, remember that you are a soldier. You don't behave like a civilian. You don't walk like a civilian. You are a soldier. No soldier entangles himself with the affairs of the civilians. Kwa vile vile laya, alikuwa naambiwa hivi by the way, alikuwa naambiwa vile laya wanapigana, hivyo sivyo soldiers wanapigana. 
Kwa hivyo wewe ujue ujue kuishi maisha ya kiasikali usiishi kama maisha ya laia. Laione za kuta wanapigana wenyewe kwa wenyewe. Askali anajua adui. So, we need to have that that gate. Paul and Tobias finally brethren Ephesians 6:10. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on that whole armor of God. And we say that we don't it's not something that we pick and we put on is we make a life we activate the armor of god the armor of god is already given to us we make it a life we activate the armor of god can you say i have the armor of god if you have jesus you have the armor of god if you have jesus you are already enlisted as a soldier you have already been given the weapons he is actually the number one weapon and he is in you he came into your life as Jesus and he told us in my name you'll cast out demons if he is in you have his name so the armor is not something that you look for it's something that you bring alive it's something that you work out the way you work out your salvation you work out you work out and some some people read that scripture i don't know where they told us work on is work out your salvation with fear and trembling you work out your armor you are strong you are already able you have the helmet of salvation you have the breastplate of righteousness you have the truth you have the shoes you have the sword you have the shield you have them now it is to stand as a as a soldier and engage in warfare and fight for your destiny fight for your family fight to the end jesus said from the days of the john the baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffered violence amen but the violent take it how could somebody try to take it sometimes they lose sometimes they gain he didn't say that he said the violent take it take it they take it by force but they take it they don't miss it they take it the violent cannot miss it they cannot they take it by force these are the people who are fully armed they just activate their weapons that's why you're supposed to be a very good student of the word of god so that you can understand which weapon because the sword of the spirit which is the word of god so if you don't know which word you're supposed to release in a given situation you may be having the sword lakini unaitumia vibaya ama unaanza kulaani watu kuna kuna wakati ma disciples wa yesu walitaka kutumia sword nyingine yesu akamwambia pana akawaribuk kwambia kwa by jesus wakati walienda samaria and the samaritans were kamkata because they saw that he is looking at jerusalem the bible says when they, they went to samaria the samaritans they saw that jesus was looking at jerusalem but they were enemies wakasema huyu jamaa he is still thinking about our enemies so they refused his message the disciples they wakamwambia jesus call fire from heaven call fire jesus kamwambia no he rebuked them kamwambia that's not our weapons no 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 you you're going you're going another direction that's not our spirit so this is the warfare spirit the gate of warfare is supposed to be a life in every christian the gate of warfare the weapons are supposed to be intact and ready all the time in the name of jesus you are supposed to ask when you are asking every time you are ready to ask every time weapons go tiali asking is is a faith prayer you ask for healing you don't pray for healing you ask for healing it's already given you declare it amen you declare you don't pray for the blessing you ask the blessing it's already given you just declare the blessing are we together then you seek you know do you know those three levels of prayer by the way you ask is it matthew 7 7 he said ask seek knock senior na kamaliza story yake ya prayer ask is what has already been given you declare you declare when it is healing you don't beg you don't you don't cry oh mugu you don't do, you don't do go at that big direction you take authority as a son and declare what has already been given amen but when you need direction the spirit of god knows that that's when you seek let's say you want to make a decision in life you want to do some business you want to get married you want to leave kenya for uganda you seek Those are now seeking prayers. You want to know the will of God. You want to know the will of God. For but for healing you know the will of God. Amen. For blessing you know the will of God. 
Then you seek for the election. The other one is knock. That's when you stand for somebody else. Intercession. You stand for somebody else. You stand for your country. You stand for the church. You stand. You knock for them. Amen? But I'm talking about the, the gate, the horse gate. It needs to be intact. The horse gate. Horse. You take over. You possess the land. Take by force. The violin, take it by force. Take your position. Amen? The ninth gate is the east gate. The east gate. Nehemiah 3.29 After them, Zadok, the son of Imar, made repairs in front of his own house. After him, Shemaiah and the keeper of the east gate, they made repairs. The east gate is the gate that led directly to the temple. That is the gate that Jesus used to enter. So reminding us of his second coming. So you need to also to be alive to the fact that Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. That gate, your east gate, he is coming back. You don't forget his coming. He said, them that endure to the end, them that wait for me to the end will be saved. Not them that will endure, you know, like wala watafumilia uchungu paka mwisho. Ah ah. Uchungu ni kidogo kidogo. Alisema kutakuwa na persecutions. But that's not the only life we'll have. We also occupy. Sindio? We also occupy until he comes. We also fight and win. We take the kingdom. We also heal the sick until he comes. We also raise the dead until he comes. So it's not just about, you know, when he said them that endure to the end. He was not meaning that some people will be there to the end. Eh? Like they are dying to the end. No. Those people will stay with me to the end. They will stay with my gospel to the end. They will stay with the word of God to the end. They will endure staying in the one to the end. He, that is in Matthew 24 when he talks about the love of many will grow cold. So many will leave the faith. Many will look at other, other, other things. Akina kasama kuna watu wata endure, wata nishika to the end. Those will be saved. But we need to be alive that Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back and he is not coming to pick weak people. He is coming to pick his church. His church is a glorious church. He said, I will build my church and the gate of hell shall never, never. And that's an eternal declaration. The gates of hell shall never prevail against it. The church. The church is a strong, is a strong body. The church is a glorious body. The church is a great body. As we wait for the rapture, as we would call it, we are not escaping from COVID. We are not escaping from, we are not running away. We are not of them that run away from. We are the, one, we are, we are the Nehemiahs. We run to, we conquer, we will build. So he is coming for builders. He is coming for healers. He is coming for people who are occupying territories. He is coming for people who are doing the word of God. Those are the people he is coming for. But he is coming. The East Gate is a reminder that Jesus is coming. Can you remind your neighbor Jesus is coming? Amen. Jesus is coming. So he told us to be ready. Ready, ready. What, is, what does it mean by being ready by the way? That I'm ready for him. Is ready just keeping quiet? Ready is doing what he called you to do. You remember the story of the ten virgins? Ready is not waiting. Tamimi ni kotiari tu. Nagoja. Ah ah. Ready ni ta inawaka. Yundi already. Ready siyo kuka ukigoja. Ready ni wanawali kumi. Wali 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 kwa nagoja bwana rusi. Watano tazao. Zikazimika. Kwa hivyo tazi likuwa zinawaka. Mafuta iwezi tumika kama taa haiwaki. So anatarajia, alikujia, alikuta wale ambazo taa zao, taa yao ya ijiri, taa yao ya imani, taa yao ya maombi, taa yao ya vile vipawa, amempatia. Kama ni daktari, alikutwa badu anatibu watu, anafanya kazi hile mungu amemuitia. Kama ni mwalimu, alikutwa badu taa yake, akile kipawa mungu amempatia, badu ilikuwa inawaka. Those are the people ambapo waliingia akafurahishwa na wao taa bado ilikuwa inawaka sio wale waliacha kazi sio wale walikuwa ibaji alafu wakatoroka waka kwaya 
sio wale walikuwa wahubiri halafu wakaacha kuhubiri sio hao hao tai nazima wale ambao taa yao inawaka he is coming back let me your neighbor let your light let your light let you let your candle be be, be what do you call that candle lighting yeah the candle should be on on flame you know flame light your candle yeah light your candle he is coming for those whose candles are on and 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 on go light your world there's a song to that effect you know the last gate that he was able to build Nehemiah 3 Nehemiah 3:31 the gate hamikad the gate hamikad after him repaired makia the ghostly son on the place of nethins of the merchants over against the gate mifikad to the going of the corner it has a it has a hebrew word but the gate this this gate was the gate that the military used to come through for rewarding after the battle it was a rewarding gate don't forget about that gate be alive to the fact that he is a rewarder he rewards yani analipa huyu analipa huyu unapofanya kazi yake yeye analipa we shall all appear before the judgment that was actually like the judgment gate we shall all appear at the judgment seat of Christ to receive our rewards to receive our crowns we need to be alive and that gives us hope as we work as we rebuild the other gates it is not in vain as we rebuild the gates all the host gate as we fight for our destinies as we occupy as we possess the land as we do what he has called us to do he says the labor in the lord is not in vain second corinthians 5 second corinthians uh, 15 let me read 15 1557 but thanks be to god which gives us victory through the lord jesus christ first 58 therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast and movable always abounding in the work of the lord for as much as you know that your labor in the lord is not in vain your labor in the lord is not in vain it will be greatly rewarded he is a rewarder the bible says in the book of hebrews 11:6 that anyone who comes to god must believe that he is and he is a rewarder don't forget the rewarding part of your life don't forget the rewarding part of god he is not after misusing you He's not after abusing you. He is not taking advantage of you as you rebuild the gates of your life. As you rebuild the gates of your ministry. As you rebuild the gates wherever he has called you to rebuild the gates of the city like Nehemiah, it is not in vain. There is a rewarding gate and you will enter through that rewarding gate. And that rewarding gate does not start in heaven. It is start here. He is. Can you say he is? not he will be hebrews 11:6 does not say he will be a rewarder he says he is anyone who believes in god must first of all believe that he is and he is but without faith must believe that he is and that he is never forget that as you work for jesus he is a rewarder of them that seek him diligently he is now a rewarder He will reward you in this life. He will bless you in this life. He will stand for you in this life. You know, what if we were able to rebuild those gates? Can, can you just stand on your feet and just look at those gates and tell the spirit of God, help me to hear your voice as I rebuild the gates. You know, Nehemiah just needed to hear that kind of a message and he took upon himself and he started rebuilding the gates. The ship gate. Can, can, can you just you just go before the Lord? This is personal. Nehemiah did not call for a meeting. He didn't say now come. He, 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 he took it personally. He said it is my responsibility to rebuild the gates. It is he did not think he is not qualified. He did not think that he is not the one. He said just because I have this message, I am the one. That was his first winning. That just because I have had this message, I'm the one to rebuild the gates. Si kwanza upokea hiyo kwamba just because you have had this message, you are the one to rebuild the gates. You are the one. The city may be big, but you are the one to rebuild the gates. The family may be big. Things may be complicated in your life, but you are the one to rebuild the gates. Can you first of all acknowledge yourself before God the way Nehemiah did? Alienda kwa Mungu akamwambia God, I take responsibility. You read the book of Nehemiah chapter 1. He took responsibility. 
He said, we are the people who have messed this. I'm the one who is going to rebuild it. Take responsibility. Abia mungu leo nimekuja kwa ibada, umeniongelesha. Ninaanza safari ya kujenga kuta zote ambazo zimebomolewa na maadui wa Yesu. Kuta zote zimebomolewa na zianza kuzijenga sasa. This is practical. Nehemiah did it. He went to God in prayer. That was the first thing he did. He said, I will rebuild the gate. Si umuambie tu buwana muambie. Muambie, I will rebuild the gates of my life. I will rebuild them. Every gate that the enemy has brought down in my life, I will rebuild it. I will rebuild it. I will rebuild that gate. I will rebuild the gate. Every gate the enemy has taken out of my family, I will rebuild that gate. I will stand for that gate. I will be the builder of the city. 